MCC Credit for First Time Home Buyers. MCC stands for Mortgage Credit Certificate. MCC is a federal tax credit that's given by the US government and it's given annually and it's 20% of the actual mortgage interest that you pay and it's maxed out at $2,000. Now this video is gonna cover who's eligible, how it's calculated, how it's dispersed, and the pros and the cons. So you wanna stay tuned. I'm Jennifer Hernandez, lender for lots of years. I've closed thousands of loans, helping homeowners achieve home ownership. Real facts, no BS, right here on my Loan With Jen channel. Let's get started. Who is eligible? You have to be a first time buyer. Now, first time buyer in the lending world is defined as someone who has not owned a home for three years. So if you haven't owned any home, whether you bought it, inherited it, however you acquired it, that's owning a home. So if it's been three years since you've owned anything, then you're eligible for these first time buyer benefits. The other thing is it has to be your primary home. That's very important. It's gotta be your primary residence where you lay your head at night. It's called a primary residence. There's also income limits. Now this part is very, very important. So it depends on which state and which county area that you live in. It's called average median income, AMI, for short, and every county has a different calculation. So I'm not gonna give any numbers here, but check with your local lender and or realtor. They'll point you to a lender. That's where you're gonna find and be able to investigate in your area what the AMI is. Now you could also look for it online. You could just search online and say, what's the AMI in Harris County? So the tax credit is given for certain percentages of the AMI. Usually it's around 80%. I say usually because it depends if you're buying in a targeted area or a non-targeted area. Now I know what you're thinking, Jennifer, I'm already overwhelmed. There's just so many details. That's true. There's so much involved in the mortgage credit certificate, but know that if you fall, probably I would say if you're in the household income, $80,000 range, household means that you and a spouse or you and a partner, you, your household earns $80,000 dollars or less you're probably eligible now in high cost areas those limits increase and if your family size is three or more people those limits increase as well so again it's good to check with a local lender local state lender in your area that can find that out so mortgage credit certificate that's what we're talking about is available for first-time buyers there are income limits you need to be aware of and it's a 20 percent calculation of the mortgage interest that you pay so we're going to go over some examples examples here in just a minute. So how this is distributed. So what you do is when you apply for the loan, you let them know like, hey, I'd like to qual do I qualify for mortgage credit certificate? So the lender will check to make sure you are eligible and they will set it up it goes to the closing. So the lender will let you know if you qualify. Now at closing, there are some one-time closing costs that are that are required. It's about seven or $800 that is subject to change. It's a one-time fee. And then what you do is you get a certificate, an actual physical certificate in your closing documents, and you give that to your tax preparer, or you have to give that to the IRS when you file your taxes on the next year and every year thereafter, that as long as you're in that house, you are able to get the mortgage credit certificate or the mortgage credit each year. So it's it's payable to you at tax time in April when you file your taxes every year. Now here is how the credit is calculated. Okay, in this example, we're gonna say that your mortgage interest for one year is $10,000, okay? 20% of $10,000 is $2,000. That's actually coincidentally the max credit that you can receive. Now, if you buy a house that's larger and you have higher mortgage interest and that 20% is a higher number than 2,000, you won't be able to get more. The max amount that you're able to get is 2,000. 
$1,000. So how it works is you file your tax return, you submit that you've got the certificate, you'll get the 20%, let's say if you pay $10,000 in mortgage interest, you'll get a $2,000 rebate or refund, and then the other $8,000, you know, $10,000 minus $2,000 is $8,000. The other $8,000 of unused mortgage interest credit is you're able to deduct that from your taxable income for income tax purposes. Now, this is not professional accounting advice, so definitely check with a tax preparer, but that's in general how this works. Now, let's say that your mortgage interest was $8,000 a year. That $8,000 a year, if you times it by 20%, that's $1,600. That would be the amount that you would receive as the refund. Now, here's the benefits of the mortgage credit certificate, MCC credit. Affordability, it really helps you be able to get that refund in your pocket each year that helps reimburse you. You know, you might have had to go up a little bit in your monthly payment more than you'd anticipated. It's an actual refund that comes exactly to you each year to help alleviate some of those increased costs of home ownership. The other thing is it helps you qualify. So did you know that let's say your 20% calculation in the example that we did before was that $2,000. We are able to use that as income for you when we're qualifying. So that means $2,000 divided by 12 months, that's $166 a month. For qualifying purposes, we add that $166 to your qualifying income and it will help you qualify for a little bit more house. The other benefit of the MCC is that you can use it with most types of loan programs. So you can use it for a conventional loan, all of the government loans, which is USDA, FHA, and VA loans. Now there are some downsides to the MCC credit. The first is that it has income limits. It's not available to everybody. So if you make more than the average median income in your area, you will not be eligible. The other thing is it includes household income. So even if your spouse or someone that lives in your household, it could be a parent that lives with you that you claim as a dependent. So if there's other income and you're over that limit, you could exceed that limit even if that person's not on the loan. So you wanna make sure and talk to a lender as quick quickly as possible to see how you qualify regarding income. The last thing is recapture tax. Now this one was a little bit of a surprise and I was taken aback when I really figured this out about the program is that the IRS is subject to take profit from you when you sell the house they're going to calculate whether or not you've made profit, which in most cases people have, and they will be likely eligible to have a recapture tax of the benefits. So let me tell you what that means. First of all, if you live in the house for nine years, there's no recapture tax. So yay, hooray, nine years is the goal to live in the house and you don't have to worry about it. Now, let's say you have to sell for whatever reason in year number seven, you are going to pay up to, it's an either or. So you either pay 6.25% of the original principal balance, or you have to pay 50% of the gain on the home, whichever is less. So I did a quick math for you. Let's say you bought the house for $300,000 and you put down three and a half percent and your loan amount that you got was $289,500. Let's say that you had to sell in year seven. And so that 6.25% of your original loan amount is calculated. So 6.25% times 289,500 is equivalent to $18,093. Now, then the other calculation is made. Let's say that you sold the house for $400,000 when you sell it in year seven, and the original purchase price was $300,000. So you made a profit of $100,000 over that seven year period. So that's $100,000 and it's compared to, it's taken half, you take half of the $100,000, they take half of the profit, that leaves us $50,000. 
and you weigh that against, is that more or less than the 6.25% calculation? Now I know these are a lot of words. I myself had to do the math like three times. So $18,093, the 6.25% calculation is less than the 50% of the gain. So that is what the IRS would take from directly from the sale when you sell the property. So it is important for you to understand that nine year portion of time. And further note, this is the most important thing for you to know. If at any time you ever left that residence, and it was no longer your primary and you rented it out, you will be subject to recapture tax. So that is very, very, very important. And the last thing I'll say is they will also do the recapture tax if you've had increases in income of more than 5% each year. So that being said, talk to your local lender to see what's best for you. Know what the pros and cons are. Good luck with your home purchase. Please comment, ask me questions. I'd love to answer them. Talk to you soon.